Einstein developed the theory of relativity. The theory of relativity includes both special general relativity and general relativity. Today, I'm going to talk about general relativity. Before we dive into general relativity, I want to tell you a little bit about special relativity. Special relativity explains how to interpret motion between different inertial frames that are moving with a constant speed relative to each other. Einstein's theory of special relativity is based on two key principles. One, the principle of speed of light. The speed of light is the same for all observers regardless of their motion relative to the light source. And two, the principle of relativity. The laws of physics don't change if for those moving in inertial frames of references. So if you move fast enough through space, the observations that you make about space and time differ from other observers who are moving at different speeds. Imagine that you're on a spaceship and you're moving at a constant speed relative to observer 2, who is standing still. You put a mirror on the roof of your spaceship and one on the ground and you let a light particle bounce between them. In your perspective, the light particle bounces along a vertical path, but in the eyes of observer 2, the light particle is bouncing along a diagonal path. Let's say that the light particle in your eyes has to travel a distance of s per one second. The speed, v, is therefore equal to s per second. But in the eyes of observer 2, the light particle has to travel a bigger distance, capital S, per second. And therefore the speed, capital V, is equal to capital S per second. That means that capital V and V are not the same. But the michelson morley experiment tried to detect relative motion through aether and came to the conclusion that the speed of light is constant. And since V and capital V are the speed of light, something else has to be changing. And that is time. The faster you move through space, the more time slows down. This means that time isn't always constant and this discovery has been very important for Einstein's theory of general relativity. You're probably all familiar with the theory of gravity formulated by Sir Isaac Newton. This theory explains the gravitational pull on an object towards the center of a gravitational force field. But what Newton didn't know was what gravitation was or how it looked like. It was Einstein who proved Newton wrong. Einstein stated that gravitational forces do not exist. To explain this, we need to know what space-time is. Space-time is a mathematical model that joins the three dimensions of space and the fourth dimension of time into a single concept. It's best to look at space-time as some, some, some sort of space-time fabric. Newton's idea of gravity meant that space-time is flat. Einstein believed that mass causes cause space-time to curve. The curvature of space-time is what causes the effect that we perceive as gravitation. As John Archibald Wheeler once said, space-time tells matter how to move. Matter tells space-time how to curve. But how do we know space-time is actually curved? Let's have a look at light. As most of you may think, only particles with a mass experience gravitational forces. But this is not true. Light beams bend, and bend as well in gravitational force fields. This effect is called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing means that gravitational masses can alter the direction of light. Imagine that you will take a picture of a distant galaxy. Galaxies are large objects and the light rays leaving on one side of the galaxy will pass through a different part of space than the light rays leaving on the other side. The light rays will be bent in a different way and will form a distorted viewpoint for the camera. Gravitational lensing was the first successful test of general relativity and proved that space-time is not always flat. We can also look at space-time curvature by using mathematics. Let's draw a space-time diagram. We use distance for the x-axis and time for the y-axis. If we draw an acceleration in this diagram, you will see that the more time increases, the distance travel will become bigger exponentially. 
The equivalence principle stated that if you are on the ground, being subject to gravitational force g, 9.81 meter per second squared, or traveling through space at an acceleration of 9.81 meter per second squared, there will be no experiment you could perform to know whether you are in space or standing on the ground. If you're traveling through space, you're traveling through space-time. But because when standing on the Earth's surface is equivalent to traveling through space, that, that means that when you're standing on the Earth being pulled down by gravitational force G, you're also traveling through space-time. Let's draw the space-time diagram, in which we will be traveling from point A to point B. When traveling from point A to point B, we'll have to travel a distance x in the time t. But another observer, say observer 2, who is moving at speeds relative, relative to us, but not the same speed, will measure another t, an x, because we're moving through space-time, remember? But there's one value everybody has to agree on, which is s squared, is ct squared minus x squared. Whatever observation based value someone puts into this equation, s squared will always be constant. And as you can see in the equation, s is a measure of distance. But well, s here is the, is the distance of the path through space time. The path through space time is a constant value for all observers. If we plot s squared is ct squared minus x squared, we'll get a hyperbola, on which every point with its lengths to, to the coordinates 0, 0 are all different. So why am I saying that they are the same? Well, what I am saying isn't wrong. We just can't correctly plot a formula on a flat paper with two dimensions. So if acceleration through space has a curved effect on space time, and gravity by the equivalence principle also has a curved effect on space time, then what causes space time to curve? The answer is mass. It's quite simple actually. Here we have an equation of Newtonian gravity when standing on Earth's surface. F is equal to m times g, in which m stands for mass, and g is the gravitational constant. Here you have an equation for acceleration. A is equal to F net divided by M. You see that they both share the same variable, mass, and so it is mass that gets space time. Thus, Einstein stated that gravitational force fields do not exist, but the effects that we perceive as gravitation are actually caused by the curvatures in space time. To explain both perspectives of Einstein and Newton on space time, I will have to explain them in geometric space time terms. Newton says that space-time is flat. He believes that inertial surfaces shouldn't accelerate relative to each other. Gravity, as Newton described it, would be more like an additional force that causes some world lines of inertial observers to bend. Einstein believes that inertial frames, which means axes plus time, are only valid over tiny space-time patches if space-time is curved. You can make conclusions using large inertial frames. Global inertial frames do not exist in spacetime, but global inertial observers do. These observers have no forces on them, and their world lines are geodesics. Geodesics are straight lines in curved spaces, like the equator. The geodesics are being adapted to each small spacetime patch. General relativity is one of the few theories that blew our minds. It changed our understanding of space and time, and has become the basis of today's cosmological model of a consistently expanding universe. Einstein's view on the universe made many think. Would it be possible to travel through wormholes? Could we bend spacetime to travel to other galaxies in just seconds? Einstein didn't just make a theory, he made us think.